who's there? Those are the first two words in Shakespeare's The Tragedy of Hamlet, the Prince of Denmark. It's also the essential question that great literature asks of us, who's there? In ourselves and in our communities and in the world at large, the question of who's there has continued to resonate across the ages from when Hamlet was originally published in 1603 to today. When I read Hamlet, I was in high school, and I was slightly younger than the Hamlet character, but like a lot of adolescents, I grappled with answering the question of who's there for myself. And what really hit home to me reading Hamlet was that I could identify with how his process of coming to terms with his own grief at the premature loss of his father mirrored the loss of my own father at the age of nine. Now, there were a few things that were different from Hamlet. For example, I was fortunate in that, unlike Hamlet, my father was not murdered by my uncle. So there wasn't any quest for revenge or anything like that. But the more essential aspect of facing great loss at a young age really did hit home with me. Hamlet first confronts a world that tells him to move on, to get over it. Even Hamlet's own mother tells him to cast thy knighted color off. Do not forever with thy veiled lids seek for thy noble father in the dust. Thou knowest tis common, all that lives must die, passing through nature to eternity. A lot of the conversation in my high school classroom was around how difficult it was for Hamlet to make a decision. But for me personally, the play was really about how grief, if it's not properly processed in its own time, can lead to greater challenges. Hamlet is not decisive, indecisive, he's not depressed, he is grieving. So I always felt like Hamlet had been placed in a profoundly unfair position. Here he is, a young man, at the age of barely being a man, and the problems that he has been handed by taking the responsibility of fixing those problems created by the grown-ups around him. So I kept thinking, if only the court had just let Hamlet take the time he needed to feel bad about his father, then maybe the play wouldn't have ended in such a tragic ending. But when my father died, when I was nine, I found a lot of solace in music, playing the piano through the lessons that I was taking. And pretty soon I started to realize that so many art forms give us powerful ways to express ourselves, ways that transcend the use of linear everyday conversation. And I found a lot of comfort in Hamlet because I recognized that I was not alone. Because if Shakespeare had written about the process of confronting one's own grief more than 400 years ago, then I was not the only person to ever have these feelings and that I surely would also be okay. Shakespeare lets Hamlet pass forward the lesson about the importance of grief through his dying words to his best friend Horatio. And those words help us understand the power of taking the time to say goodbye to our loved ones and keeping their stories alive in our hearts. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. Thank you.